Assalamu alaikum and welcome to this video tutorial on computer system architecture. In this video, we will know about different kinds of addressing modes. I am Muhammad Iqbal Bhatt, Assistant Professor, Department of Higher Education, JMK. Let us start. First, let us have a look at the topics that we are going to cover in this video. We will start with the question, why do we require different kinds of addressing modes? What is the need of these addressing modes? Then we will talk about advantages of addressing modes. And then we will cover some definitions required while understanding these addressing modes. And finally, we will cover different types of addressing modes most commonly used addressing modes that are available in almost all processors. Why do we require different kinds of addressing modes? Why not to have a single addressing mode? Let's answer this question. Addressing mode modes is a solution for some problem. It is a solution so what is the problem? The first question is, we should understand the problem first and then we can understand why do we require these addressing modes. The problem is that the address field or the fields in a typical instruction format are relatively small. An instruction consists of different parts. In an instruction, we have one portion called the opcode, which determines the kind of operation that that instruction is going to perform. For example, add, if we want to perform addition, subtract, if we want to perform subtraction, mult, if we want to perform multiplication, and so on. Then, after that opcode, we have some fields to identify the operands on which that operation is to be performed. Those operands can be in processor registers or in the RAM or they can be in the virtual memory. We need to identify the location of those memory, those operands so that we can perform the specified operation on those operands. But in order to identify location of these operands, we have to reference their addresses or their location inside this instruction. And a typical instruction can be a 16-bit instruction or a 32-bit instruction, and it has a small portion for these address fields. So if we want to access a large memory, then how to access that memory? So a memory has large address space. Address space is the set of addresses that are available to a process. So for example, if we have a memory of two raised power n minus one locations, and if we take n equal to 10, so we have locations from 0 to 2 raised power 10 minus 1, and that is 1, 0, 2, 3. We have 1 KB of memory available. That is the address space. So we need to access all these locations inside our instruction. How to access these locations? How to identify all these locations so that we can place our operands inside this memory at any location? So if the memory address space is small, then we can definitely put their addresses inside this instruction, which is having limited number of bits. But if the address location, if the address space is very large, for example, if we have one GB of RAM, so then we require at least 30 bits to address each location. So we have from zero to two raised power 30 minus one locations. And you know, typically in uh, modern computers, we have RAM in GBs, we have 
8 GB RAM, 16 GB or 32 or 64 GB RAM. So if we want to address these locations, this large RAM, then we need a large address portion inside this instruction. But this is not possible since a typical instruction is having a small size. A large instruction has its own problems that we can discuss later on. So this is the problem that we need to address a large memory inside our instructions, but the instruction format restricts us to address that memory due to the small size of the address portion or the address field inside the instruction. Then what is the solution for this problem? The solution is provided by addressing modes. Addressing modes provides a solution that we can access a large memory inside a small instruction without requiring that the address field will occupy a large number of bits. Now let us look at some of the advantages of addressing modes. The first that we discussed is it reduces the number of bits in the addressing field. So the instruction size will be very small. Why? Because we require a small number of bits for address field. So we should have some portion for opcodes and then some portion for addressing field. So this is one advantage of the addressing mode that reduces the number of bits required for address field inside an instruction. Second is this addressing field provides us facilities to access memory in the form of pointers. You might be aware that pointers is a strong feature of C and C++ programming language. <coughs> and this, these pointers are only possible with the help of different addressing modes, especially indirect addressing mode. So this feature is provided by the addressing mode. And another feature is provided by these addressing modes is the program relocation. You know that before executing a program, we need to bring it into the memory and it is placed at a particular location inside the memory. During the execution, is it possible that we can move that program from one location in the RAM to some another location? That is called a program relocation. So can we relocate this process or a program inside the RAM? This feature is also provided by addressing modes. We have some addressing modes that are called displacement addressing modes that we are going to cover in this video. They help us to relocate the program inside the memory. Then another feature that is provided by these addressing modes is to modify the address part inside the instruction. If we have a fixed address inside an instruction, then it is not possible to modify that address. So addressing modes provide us a feature that we can modify the address field inside an instruction. This feature help us to access memory in the form of uh, consecutive locations, as in the case of arrays. In case of arrays, we start with the base address of the array and then continuously increment it with the scale factor to access other locations. So here we need to modify the address part so that we can access all the locations occupied by the uh, occupied by the array. So for this feature, we require addressing modes. We have index addressing mode that help us to access consecutive locations by modifying the address inside the instruction. Then there are some addressing modes that do not require any address field at all. These are implied and immediate and the, this feature help us to re further reduce the number of bits inside an instruction. So we will cover these as well. Now let us have a look at some of the definitions that are required while understanding these addressing modes. The first one is effective address. 
written as EA, what is an effective address? It is the actual address of the location containing the operand. So as though I told that we place the data inside the memory and inside the instruction, we need to access its address. The actual and final address of the operand is called its effective address. Inside the instruction, we may reference, we may access, or we may need to process its address. The processing performance will depend on the kind of addressing mode we have used. After the, uh, this computation or processing has been performed on the address provided in the instruction, we get the actual physical address of the operand. That actual address is called effective address. For example, here we have an instruction with some opcode and the address of the operand is 24. But this is not actual address of the operand. The operand is somewhere inside the memory and its actual address is 850. But the address provided in the instruction is 24. So now we have to check for the kind of addressing mode that has been used in this instruction. Based on that addressing mode, we need to perform some computation on this address. So for example, we have to add the program counter address to this 24 to obtain 826 plus 24 is 850. That 850 is the actual physical address of the operand. So this actual address is called effective address. So the address provided in the instruction is a virtual address, but the address issued to the RAM or the memory containing the operand is called effective address. So how do we determine this effective address? It will depend up upon the kind of addressing mode that has been used. For example, in this instruction, a relative addressing mode has been used. And the relative addressing mode, in relative addressing mode, we have to add the PC address to the address provided in the instruction to get the effective address. So this is called the effective address. So in short, an effective address is the final address of the operand in the memory. Then another definition is what is a program counter or a PC? It is one of the registers inside the processor that is used to keep track of the instruction in the program stored in the memory. So PC always holds the address of next instruction that is to be executed. So if currently instruction number 03, this instruction, current instruction is being executed, then PC will hold the address of next instruction that is to be executed. So after this program counter address, it is loaded into the memory address register and from memory address register, we get that instruction. This is uh, 04 instruction. It will be stored, uh, loaded into the instruction register for execution. And during this process, the program counter will be incremented to point to the next instruction that is to be executed. So this program counter keeps track of which instruction is to be executed next. So the address of next instruction is always placed inside this program counter. So these were two important definitions that we require. Now let us talk of different types of addressing modes. In this video, we will be covering these seven addressing modes. We'll start with immediate addressing mode, then direct addressing mode, indirect addressing mode, register addressing mode, register indirect addressing mode. Then we have some displacement addressing modes. This is a group of addressing modes that have similar features, but, but a different uh, computations to calculate the effective address. Those are called displacement addressing. We have relative, we have base indexing, we have uh, base, uh, we have index uh, addressing mode. These are all 
grouped in this displacement addressing mode. Then we will talk of st stack addressing mode. Let us start with immediate addressing mode. Immediate, what is the image meaning of this immediate? Immediate means the operand is immediately inside the instruction. It is given directly inside the instruction. So we do not require to access the memory to fetch the operand. So the operand is directly given inside the instruction. For example, we have an instruction add ax 5 edge. This is an assembly language instruction. That means add the contents of content 5 edge to the contents of AX register. AX is a register inside the processor and add is the operand uh, opcode and operand is 5 edge. 5 it is 5 edge means hexadecimal. So 5 mean we need to add this 5 to AX. So what is the operand that we need to add to AX? The operand is 5 and it is directly given inside the instruction. So here we need not to reference any memory since the operand is directly provided inside the instruction and the processor can directly perform the operation given in the instruction. So what are the benefits of this addressing mode? Since there is no memory reference to fetch the data, we need not to access the RAM memory to fetch the operand so that we can perform the operation. The operand is directly given inside the instruction. So definitely it will be very fast. This is the fastest addressing mode available in the processor. The speed of an instruction is determined by the operands that take time to bring them from the memory to the processor. Since we cannot perform, the processor cannot perform any kind of operation unless the data is available inside the scratch pads, the registers inside the processor. So we need to bring the operands from RAM to CPU registers and that process is time consuming. That takes some time to access the RAM, to calculate the effective address and then bring that data inside the processor registers. But since in this immediate addressing mode, we have no memory access, the operand is directly inside the register, uh, inside the instruction. So it is one of the fastest addressing modes available. But there are some drawbacks. The first and the most visible drawback of this addressing mode is limited range. Since the size of an instruction is limited, so inside the instruction, we can only access a limited range of operands. For example, if we have 10 bits for this operand, then we cannot access a data more than to raise power 10 minus one. So if uh, the data range, that data cannot contain a, uh, an operand that can go beyond to raise power 10 minus one. So it has a limited range. So in order to get more range for operands, we go for other kinds of addressing modes. And then we have another addressing mode, the second one, direct addressing mode. So what is direct addressing mode? It is a shift of the operand inside the instruction to some memory location. In immediate, we were having the operand directly inside the instruction at this location where we have mentioned A. Now we have shift that operand to the memory and the address of that operand has been given inside this instruction. So this is called a direct addressing mode. We directly provide the address of the operand inside the instruction. So for example, we have changed the previous instruction, which was add ax comma 05h. Now we have stored the 05h inside a location in the memory. 
so value defined by it 0 5 so this uh, instruction is equivalent to int value equal to 5 so in c when we write int value equal to 5 value will be a variable it uh, created inside the ram and it will be given some memory location it will be given some uh, address that address we are using inside this instruction add ax value so instead of this value the address of this operand will be put so here we have shifted the operand from an instruction to memory and inside the instruction we are accessing it is address so add the contents of cell value to accumulator x look in the memory at address value for the operand so in order to calculate the effective address the effective address is directly given inside the instruction the address that is the physical address of the operand we need not to perform any kind of uh, computation on this address that is directly given inside the instruction here we have some advantages the first is single memory reference since we need to access the memory only once the address is directly given inside this instruction and when this instruction will be executed this address will be place it into the memory address register and they, that will directly fetch the operand from the memory location and second we need not to perform any additional calculations to calculate the effective address since the effective address is directly provided inside the instruction that is the final physical address of this location so there are no computations provided so it will be fast though not that fast as the immediate addressing mode but it will be among the fastest addressing modes and again the drawback is it is having some limited address space we can access the memory only to the extent that is provided by the space given to this address field inside the instruction if the instruction address field is provided 20 bits then we can at maximum access 1 mb of ram 2 raised power 20 is 1 mb so we can access 1 megabyte of ram so it is having limited address space how to cover this limited address space drawback of direct addressing mode we go for indirect addressing mode so what is indirect addressing mode this indirect addressing mode is equivalent to the pointers that we are using in C language. Memory cell pointed to by address field contains the address of the operand. Now, instead of this portion given in the instruction, it contains an address, but that is not the final address of the operand. The final operand is placed somewhere in the memory. So the address provided in the instruction is an address of another location that contains the address of the final operand so here effective address will be the address provided by the location given in the instruction so you can consider this as for example if I create a an integer int i equal to 50 so an integer will be created that will be stored inside the memory then if i create a pointer int star ptr equal to end of i that pointer will point to the memory location containing the actual operand so this scheme is similar to that so here we provide an address of the memory location that contains the final address of the operand so for example add ax a we have provided this a inside these braces so here the addressing mode is indirect so processor first of all will fetch this memory location a it will go to the memory location provided inside this instruction a and there it will fetch the contents that contain the actual address of the operand 
So this is indirect addressing mode. So advantage is it is having very large address space. So we can have to raise power n locations. We can access to raise power n locations. Since we are using an indirect addressing mode, for example, if we have 20 bits inside this instruction, then inside uh, using those 20 big bits, we can access to raise power n locations. And those to raise power n locations, each location is capable of accessing any other memory location so if the word length word length is the size of the memory if the uh, uh, word length of this memory is n then we can access to this for n memory locations using this indirect addressing mode and further we can nest it as you know we can create pointer of pointers so if we use pointer of pointers, then we first of all access the memory location given inside the instruction and then go to that location that again contains the address of another memory location that contains the operand. That is uh, pointer of pointers and we can go for any level of cascading in this case. We can create pointer of pointer of pointers so that we, we can access a very large memory location. Here, the disadvantage is that we need to access memory more than once. In case of direct addressing mode, we were having a single memory reference. But here, we have to access memory at least more than two times. So, for example, first in the first access, we need to access this location that is given inside the instruction to fetch this address that is put inside the memory address register and again we need to fetch memory to fetch the actual operand so it is having uh, more memory accesses and the number of memory accesses determine the speed of the instruction execution so for example if one memory access takes 10 nanoseconds to fetch the contents from memory to process the registers then this indirect address mode will require 20 nanoseconds to access the actual operand since we need to access the memory twice so when we need to access the memory more than once and it will be definitely slower than the direct and immediate addressing mode And fourth one is register addressing mode. What is register addressing mode? Here the operand is put inside a register. And in the processor, we are having the fastest memory elements called the scratch pads or registers that hold the uh, operand to perform some operation. So if we have an instruction and the operand that is stored inside some register so for example we have move ax bx move the contents of bx register to accumulate register here the data is stored inside the register bx the processor registers are either named or they are having some numbers and in the assembly language we use these names to access these registers ax bx and di si these are the names of these registers and these registers hold the operands in case of register addressing mode here the effective address is directly the address of the register the register contain the operand so the effective address will be the name or the number of that register the advantage is very small address field since we can have 10 or 20 registers and we need to access the name of these 20 registers for example if we have uh, 16 registers then we then we need just three bits to uh, address all these 16 registers so it will be having a very small address portion so shorter instructions when the uh, instruction size is short this means uh, we can fetch that instruction very fast no memory access so it will be fast since we need not to access the memory the ram 
we are directly holding the address in uh, holding the operand inside the registers it will be very fast but what are the disadvantages limited number of registers the computer is having only a limited number of registers we can have 16 or 20 register processor so we cannot hold large number of operands inside these registers since there are limited number of registers inside a processor and so when there are limited number of registers the address space is very limited address space is the set of addresses that this process can access since there are only 16 registers so the address space consists of only these 16 registers so this is having limited address space then we can go for another client that is register indirect which is equivalent to indirect addressing mode so what is this addressing mode the operand is actually stored inside the memory the operand is in the memory but the address that of that operand is placed inside some register and we access that register inside the instruction so we are providing a register inside the instruction when we go to that register the contents of that register contain the actual address of the operand this is called a register indirect we are indirectly accessing the operand with the help of a register so this in this addressing mode the effective address will be equal to the contents of the register r so for example we have move ax bx move the contents of the location stored inside the register bx into the ax register so here we have an instruction the instruction is having a register name inside it uh, in the address field we go to that register and fetch the contents those contents contain the effective address of the operand and then actually fetch the memory so this is register indirect it is uh, again having very large address space so the address space will be equivalent to the size that can be stored inside this register if we have a 16 bit register then we can access to raised power 16 memory locations and if we have a 32 bit register then we can access to raised power 32 which is equivalent to 4 gb ram so we can access 4 gb ram using a 32 bit register here again we are having lesser number of memory accesses as compared to the indirect addressing mode in indirect addressing mode we were having two memory accesses first to access the address of the operand and then to access the operand here we are having a single memory access the first access is for a register which is much faster than a memory access and then the second access is for the memory so it is having lesser number of memory accesses than the indirect addressing mode since the first access is for registers and the register access is very fast than the memory access the disadvantage is we are having extra memory reference how is the extra memory reference because we are accessing register and then we are accessing the memory so as compared to register addressing mode this is having an extra memory reference so this was a register indirect addressing mode now move to sixth one that is displacement addressing mode so this is one of the most powerful addressing modes it combines the capabilities of previously discussed direct and register indirect addressing mode what happens in this we uh, it requires that uh, the instruction contains two parts inside the instruction we are providing two parts one is the explicit address portion and another one is an address that is either stored inside the register or somewhere in the memory so here we are providing two parts the address portion the effective address of the operand is 
provided is uh, divided into two portions one is directly given inside the instruction that is the displacement and another one is stored inside some register while calculating the effective address we combine these two addresses the address provided by the register and the address directly given inside the instruction to get the effective address of the memory so this is displacement addressing mode and there are a number of displacement addressing modes that use the similar technique of these two portions the difference is only that there will be different register used in different kinds of displacement addressing modes so here we have effective address that is equivalent to some start address plus displacement we provide this displacement and some starting address that is stored inside some register or we can write it as we have effective address equal to offset plus some segment register we have some segment registers si di that we can use to access the base address of the segment and then provide some displacement in the form of this a address so this is displacement addressing mode so in displacement address addressing mode the address portion is divided into two components one component is directly put inside the instruction and the other one is stored inside some register so in order to calculate the full effective address of the memory we need to combine these two addresses the address stored inside some register and the address directly given in the instruction there are three types of relative addressing modes that we are going to discuss in this video the first one is relative addressing mode second base register addressing mode and the third one indexed addressing mode let us see these one by one the first one is relative addressing mode so what is relative addressing mode in relative addressing mode the address portion that we store inside the register is stored inside the pc program counter so in register relative addressing mode it is also called pc relative because here the implied register pc contains one portion of the address so in order to calculate the effective address the address provided in the instruction is added to the address given in the program counter to calculate the effective address of the operand so if we go back here in this displacement scheme the r portion is the pc program counter and a portion is the direct uh, is directly given inside the instruction so we have opcode and some displacement but the register portion is implied implied means we need not to explicitly mention this program counter inside this instruction it is implied the processor will calculate it while calculating the effective address it will directly use this program counter to calculate the effective address so effective address is the content is given in the instruction plus the implied register pc and this addressing mode is used for locality of references since program counter always contains the address of next instruction that is to be executed so we store the operand at some, some location from the program counter so for example if pc is 1000 location we store the operand at 1010 location and then we put the 10 portion inside this instruction and the pc contents will be added to that to calculate the effective address that is 1010 then we have base register addressing mode so what is base register addressing mode it is a displacement addressing mode where a base register is used as a portion while calculating the effective address so here the effective address is one base register the contents of base register plus a a is the displacement that is given inside the register so here register can be implicit or explicit uh, in case of register addressing mode we were having an implicit register while calculating the effective address so same is the case uh, 
with this base register addressing mode we can have an implicit register that we need not to mention inside this instruction or we can have an explicit we can explicitly address the instruction for example add bx and some content a to some location so here the base register will be explicitly addressed inside the instruction we add the contents of base register to the contents of this displacement to calculate the effective address of the operand so this is suitable for program relocation so if we have a base address of the program the starting address of the program and then we shift this program from one location to another location we change only the base register that is the base of the uh, that is the starting location of the program and the rest of the instructions will not be affected since we are adding this displacement from that location for example if we load the program at location number 1000 and the operand is stored as 1010 so we reference that operand inside this instruction we provide the base register that is 1000 plus 10 that is the operand uh, that is the displacement for that operand so the effective address will be 1010 1010th location will be the effective address of that operand now if we shift this program from base address 1000 to base address 2000 so base address will be changed from 1000 to 2000 so the operand now will be stored at 2010th location so when we calculate the effective address the base address base register will be having 1000 plus we add displacement 10 so we will uh, will be having 2000 we add the displacement 10 to get 2010 that is the address of the operand so this helps us in program relocation at runtime then we have indexed addressing mode so what is indexed addressing mode it is opposed to the base register addressing mode in base address register uh, base register addressing mode we were having the base address inside the register plus displacement here we perform the opposite inside the register we are having a displacement and the base address of the memory is provided inside the instruction so this is uh, similar to base register addressing mode but here we shift which component contains the base address the in base address addressing mode the base address is provided by the register and the displacement is given in the instruction but in case of index addressing mode the base address is given in the instruction and the displacement is stored inside an index register so in order to calculate the effective address we add the contents of this index register to this address given in the memory to calculate the effective address so here we need to change the contents of the index register to access different memory locations so this is the addressing mode that is used in case of arrays so we have effective address that is the contents of an instruction register for us a here a contains the base address and the index register contain the displacement but in case of base register this contained the displacement but the base register contains the base address that is the only difference between these two addressing modes so this is suitable for accessing arrays since in case of arrays we have a base address that is given inside the instruction and then we access different locations array of one array of two array of three using this index register we modify this index register to access different locations of the memory it is also suitable for increment decrement operations if we want to increment a memory location or a decrement a memory location so for that we can use this index register then finally we have stack addressing mode so what is stack addressing mode it is a special kind of addressing mode that makes use of stack a stack is a data structure 
that works on the principle of LIFO, last in, first out. So in case of a stack, the last item that goes inside the stack is the first that we can access. So it is a stack. So stack addressing mode makes use of this stack. So here the operand is implicitly inside the stack, at the top of the stack. So for example, if we have a stack containing some elements 5, 6, 9, 2, and this is the top of the stack, 2, the top of the stack is this. And if we issue the instruction add, here we are not mentioning any kind of operand. So this is a zero operand instruction. We are not mentioning any operand. It implicitly takes the operands from this stack. So what will it do? It will first of all pop this topmost item from the stack that is two. Then since add requires two operands, then it will pop up the second element nine and then it will perform the addition of these two numbers 9 plus 2 is 11 and then it will store the result inside this stack so this will be the resultant operation uh, the result of the stack after the operation add so it will pop the topmost item 2 then it will pop the second operand 9 then it will perform the operation add and store the result inside this stack this is called stack addressing mode and in stack addressing mode stack is implicit the operands are stored inside the stack if the instruction requires a single operand then the single item at the top of the stack will be used for that operation if the instruction requires two operands then it will pop up the top two items from the stack to perform the operation the destination of this addressing mode is again stack the result is again stored inside the stack. So these were different kinds of addressing modes that are most common in almost all processors. There are some uh, specific kind of peculiar kind of addressing modes in addition to these, but these are the most commonly used addressing modes. Hope you got the concept. Thanks for watching this video.